In this problem, we are to solve the equation tangent of x equals negative 7 and write my two answers that appear in this interval in radians to four decimal places. So let me first start by anticipating which quadrants my answer is going to be in. So the way I usually tell students, and this again is not the only way to do it, but if you want a quick way of remembering, the all students take calculus is just a quick way of remembering which trig functions are positive and which are negative in each of the quadrants. So I want, when I solve tan x equals negative 7, I need an angle so that the tangent comes out negative. So the A here stands for the fact that all trig functions are positive. In fact, each one of these is regarded as a positive. So this says all of them are positive in quadrant 1, but it's not going to, I don't want it to come up positive. I want it to come up negative 7. So my answer is not going to be in quadrant 1. Uh, here it says that the sine is the trig function is positive, meaning cosine and tangent is negative. Well, that's perfect. I want the tangent to be negative. So one of my answers uh, is going to be in quadrant 2. Uh, so that's good. And then the T stands for the fact that the tangent is positive in quadrant 3. We don't want the tangent to be positive. The question says when is the tangent negative 7. Uh, so my answers are not in quadrant 3. Uh, so my other answer is going to be in quadrant 4. It says cosine is positive, indicating sine and tangent are negative. So let me redo this. And now that I know that my answers are in quadrant 2 uh, and 4, and let me run through the logic here. If my answers are going to be in quadrant 2 and quadrant 4, let me draw the corresponding reference uh, triangles there. Then once I find my reference angle, whatever it is here would be equal to that here. Once I find that angle, that's going to take a couple seconds in the calculator, what would I do to actually write my answers given that they want my answers between 0 and 2 pi? So uh, once I get my reference angle here, then the way to represent this angle here, well, it's not going to be the same as the reference angle. What I would have to do is take halfway around the circle, which is pi radians, and pi radians would be halfway around the circle, so that would be this much. And if I wanted to represent the, um, the red angle, say, I could take the green angle, which is pi radians, and subtract off my, my reference angle there. So it's going to be pi, and then I'm going to have to subtract off my, let me just say, uh, ref, REF for, for reference angle. So in a minute on my calculator, I'm going to get that reference angle. And I know that my answer is going to actually be pi radians minus that reference angle would give me the, the red angle there, if you will. Uh, the other one uh, would be this angle here. I'll, I'll draw it in black. This angle here, which would be my bigger angle uh, between 0 and 2 pi. You could find that by saying, well, if I went all the way around the circle, that would be 2 pi radians. So uh, that didn't work out the way I wanted. Uh, so if I went all the way around the circle, uh, that would be 2 pi radians, 360 degrees, or 2 pi radians. So 2 pi radians brings me all the way around uh, the circle, but I don't want to go that far. I only want to go as far as right here. So you could take 2 pi radians and subtract off that reference angle, and you would end up right here. So my second answer is going to be 2 pi minus the, uh, the reference angle. So now it's just a matter of finding what that reference angle is, and I can do what I need to do. So for starters, since I'm applying the arctangent, I can ignore this up here. Since I'm applying the arctangent, the, uh, the rule is that if you're taking the arctangent of a positive, your uh, calculator will give you the angle in quadrant 1, and that would be the same as the reference angle. Uh, but we're not doing that. We're taking the arctangent of a negative. So it turns out when you take the arctangent of a negative number, your calculator is going to give you an angle uh, an angle or an answer between 0 and negative pi over 2. It's going to be in this range here. So it's going to give you a negative number, uh, and that angle right there, if I went clockwise, would be negative. But because we regard our reference angles as positive, what the calculator gives and what the reference angle are two different things. So the idea is let me go back to my calculator here, or go to my calculator, hit mode to make sure I'm in radian mode. I'm going to get back to my main screen by hitting second quit. I'm going to take the uh, well, I guess I didn't solve the problem. Now, I guess it's obvious to me that I need to take the inverse tangent, but uh, perhaps I need to explain that. So our equation was tan x equals negative 7. Um, let me put the equal sign here and write the negative 7 way over here. So there's my original equation. And what I'm going to do is to isolate x, because I want this to be x equals, I need to undo the tangent function. And to do that, you apply the uh, inverse tangent, which would look like this. Uh, or using the notation that I've uh, written over here, 
that would be written as the arc uh, tangent. So if I took the arc tangent of the left hand side, I would have to take the arc tangent of the right hand side. So this would be me plugging in the right hand side of the equation into the arc tangent function. So again, this simplifies down to be x, so I get that x is equal to the arc tangent of negative 7. Turns out that is not the answer that I want because the calculus is going to give me a negative result. In fact, it's going to give me an answer between 0 and negative pi over 2. Uh, so the idea is that's, that's an answer, but it's not the answer that the question was asking for. The question is asking for an angle between 0 and uh, 2 pi. So now let me go to my calculator. I've already made sure that my calculator is in radian mode. Uh, so now I'm going to do the arc tangent, or if you will, inverse tangent, of negative 7, and it's going to give you an answer in radians. And it's not going to be the answer I want because the answer it gave me, which again is a correct answer, uh, it's just I want my answer as positive, right? From 0 to 2 pi is positive, and it's giving me a negative um, number. So what it's giving me, that negative 1.4, um, 289, let me even write that down, negative 1.48, um, uh, what was it? Um, I've already forgotten it. Well, <laughs> I have a, a bad memory. Negative uh, 1.4289, negative 1.4289 um, is not the angle I want. It gives me the negative of the angle. So um, I was anticipating that. So it turns out that's not the angle I want. I want the reference angle here. So the idea is, well, the reference angle would be the same as that, uh, except for it would be uh, positive. So the reference angle is actually going to be the positive version of that, which is uh, positive 1.4289. Uh, so let me go back to my calculator. And uh, again, if you want, you know, make sure that you're in radian mode. Uh, so my answer is in radians. I'm going to multiply by negative 1 is one way to do it. I'm just going to say take the previous answer and multiply by negative uh, 1. And that's going to give me the positive uh, number. And again, that's not the angle I want. That just gives me the, the reference angle. So now that I have the reference angle to four decimal places, 1.4289, uh, I simply can plug that into here and into here uh, to find the actual angle as reported between 0 and uh, 2 pi. Uh, so here we go. I take pi minus that reference angle. Um, just because I'm too lazy to type, one thing that uh, I've learned on the calculator, if you have to use a number several times, what you can do is, uh, since that's the last number on my screen, I can hit store, hit x. Now, if I press enter, whenever I press x in the several uh, you know, following calculations, if I ever just press x, it's going to give me an accurate um, representation of that reference angle. So I need to type in pi minus that reference angle. So second pi minus, I could use previous answer, or I could just write x. So one of my answers is 1.7127. Uh, if you round up four decimal places, let's see how my, my memory holds up this time. It was 1.7127. So that's one of my answers. And the other answer, if you remember right, would be uh, 2 pi minus my reference angle. So 2 uh, pi minus, and my reference angle was this business here. Uh, but since I stored that in x, I can just press x. So my other answer to four decimals is 4.8543. Again, uh, taxing my memory probably. Uh, I don't have the best of the short-term memory, but that was 4.85. Um, Hard to talk and remember at the same time. I think it was 4.3. Uh, uh, let me go back and, and just make sure that I didn't follow up this video. Uh, so my second answer would be 4.8543. Uh, I'm not going to go through the uh, graphical uh, explanation of how to get the answers because I've done that in another video. But one thing that you could do just to sort of test your answer uh, is take the tangent of your answers and because you're going to be rounding uh, the uh, answer you cannot expect it to give you uh, exactly what you want it. I would want the tangent of my answer to come out exactly negative 7 uh, so because I rounded it you're only going to get close to negative 7 uh, but pr pretty close negative 6.999 if I rounded that even to the fourth decimal place I would get almost exactly uh, negative 7 if I rounded to three decimal places I would get negative 7 uh, our other answer would be the tangent of 4.8543. Uh, Again, it only takes a second to check your answer. I always did this before turning my tests in um, if I had time. 
And again, you can't expect to get exactly negative 7, but pretty uh, darn close.